Hi guys, today we're going to be taking a look at one of the things you can do to assess Teams adoption in your organisation. So we can have a look at Microsoft Forms. And so by the end of this video, you'll know how to set up a form, how to add some pictures into it to make it jazz up a bit, how to set the background. We'll go through how to share your form in Teams and the three ways you can get it to show up and get people to fill it in. I'll have a quick look on mobile to see how everything appears on a smaller screen. Hi, I'm Gavin from MeTime and all the tips we put on YouTube for Teams come out of real life examples. Remember to subscribe and hit the bell icon. We've got a new video on Teams coming out every Tuesday. And if you haven't already, it's probably worth watching the full basic uh, video tutorial. There's a link in the description below as well as a free download to a deck that's uh, used for training that's got a lot of the basic tips written down all in one place. If you want to work with me, there's an email in the description below, but email support at metimeapps.com. So let's get in and have a look at Microsoft Forms. Okay, so I'm in Forms right now, and we're just going to show you what the end result's going to look like before we build it. So this is what we're going to try and build together. So as we're looking at rolling teams out across our organization, I guess we want to get some feedback pretty quickly. And uh, there's lots of different tools you can use to gather feedback. I guess you might be familiar with SurveyMonkey or Google Forms or Typeform. Um, and they're all great and they're all very similar. Uh, the benefit of Microsoft Forms is that it's already in your ecosystem. There's lots of different plug plugins into Teams and SharePoint that you can use, which we'll go through. And it's part of your uh, Office 365 subscription, most probably. So why pay for another service uh, that's not integrated as well. Um, I think probably better to just use the stuff we've already got. So um, as you can see, this is to get feedback on Teams because it's uh, measuring Teams adoption. And I am a big believer in keeping your feedback survey as concise as possible, because I guess the main thing you want to do is get some quick insights back, uh, maybe some comments, and some surveys that have got like a million questions and did you like this color or that color or uh, you know rate this on one to ten how was the food blah 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 um, I'm sure we've all had those sort of surveys and they just don't get a lot of responses so I guess we want to maximize the number of responses we're getting back and therefore make the form as concise as possible so here's the form a big believer in net promoter score so we've got one question that's net promoter score uh, 0 to 10, which uh, we can go through if you're not familiar with that, um, and one box for comments. So that's what we want to make. You can see it's got some pictures in each question and a nice little background as well. So we'll go through how to make that and then how to uh, send it out and link it all together. Just before we move on, we can have a look at how you might want to set up a page for uh, Teams adoption. So we've got a SharePoint page that's in the SharePoint site that's associated with the team and it's got links to all of our tips that we would do internally, um, how we want to work together, and um, some training decks pinned in. If you don't know about SharePoint news, uh, we'll be talking about that in one of our other videos. Well, I'll link in the description below. But what I want to do is just show you if we click on one of the uh, news posts, then we, if we scroll right to the bottom, you can see how we can incorporate the form that we're going to use right into all of the communications that we're doing about Teams. So again, another really good reason why we would use uh, forms. So my internet's going a bit slow at the moment because uh, of the amount of people that are working from home. Uh, so the picture should display there as well, but you start kind of get the gist. There's a lot of places we can put the form. So if we jump back into forms, we're going to start this from scratch. And uh, if you don't know how to get to forms, you just go through the, your uh, Office 365 menu and pick forms. If it's not there, it'll be in all apps. Uh, if it's not in all apps, then you might have to speak to your Office 365 admin, see if they've turned it on, or if you pay for it already. So we're going to come into the web version of Forms, and if you'd already tried to add a form in Teams, I'll go through at the end uh, why you probably don't want to do it from there. Uh, for this purpose, at least, you want to do new form in Forms in the web. So we'll do new form, and we'll call this test. Uh, Microsoft Teams feedback, so I don't get confused with the 
real one. And you can enter a description that's for the entire uh, survey. So you can just put something in there that uh, the person that's opening it knows what you want or what the, what the form is for. Cool. So that's the title for the form. We can add pictures in most places um, and um, you can upload ones you already got or look in your OneDrive or quite handily, it uh, gives you a Bing search where we can uh, get some pictures off the internet. Just say you're res uh, responsible for copyright. Um, so I don't know, let's pick this one for our main Teams uh, header. So then we're gonna add a new question and you get choice, text, rating, date. So those are the four that show up already. And when you click on them, you can click on it and then you can see what it's gonna look like. Obviously, if it's a rating, you do five star rating, lots of things you can um, change. You might wanna add a date um, or any of those. But what I like to do is click on the uh, little down arrow and I guess you might be wanting to use this sort of rating scale uh, again, just my personal preference. I don't think that's very helpful because there's usually too many options, too many questions. Um, and although you think you might be getting some better insight, actually you're just putting people off uh, filling it in. So I always just like to go to Net Promoter Score. Just have one question that's Net Promoter Score. It's quite a harsh measure. Let's just go and delete these other questions that we don't want. And um, you can do really clever things like just like branching. So if you answer certain things on that question, you can branch the survey into different things. So it's quite a powerful, obviously we're just using it for quite a simple, um, in a simple way right now. So let's uh, get rid of all these other questions. We just want net promoter score. You can um, leave it as is, or you might want to take out a friend if it's just a business uh, a business contact. Uh, you might want to change that. Um, say it's required, and uh, that's all good. You can add a picture to each question if you want. So if you click in the text, there's a little picture box at the side, uh, and you can, oh, a video, I think that might be new. So you can put a uh, YouTube or a Microsoft Stream URL in and put a video next to your question, which would be really good to jazz up your form. That wasn't there last time I uh, set forms up, so uh, so that looks cool. So we can add another, we're just gonna go ahead and add another Teams uh, picture in here, uh, just to remind people what we're talking about whilst they, uh, and maybe if we wanna see how likely they are to recommend it, we might remind them that you can put stickers and GIFs in, because. Uh, Everyone loves a GIF. So again, apologies, my internet's going quite slow today because uh, everyone's working from home at the moment. Um, so some of the pictures are a bit slow to uh, to load, but we'll crack on. And in the second part, we just want a question. So we're just gonna say, is there anything else we should know? What is great and what could be better? Uh, we're going to tick long answer so they've got a bit more space to write and we're going to turn that off from required um, just so that people don't have to fill in if they want they can just go in quick just click a number submit and then they're done so we're going to add another picture in there just for making it look nice and jazzy this one's pretty cool um, let's pick this nice friendly teams one So again, I think this is my internet uh, connection for the pictures rather than uh, than forms. So just ignore that for the time being. Um, so it's saving as we go. You can see it says saving at the top and we'll change to save. You can click a preview to see what it's gonna look like. And you still see we've still got the, the, the green theme going on that doesn't really go with uh, the pictures we've put in or teams in general. Um, you can see what it's going to look like on mobile, it's reformatted, which is cool, and we'll have a look at how that turns out later. But we're going to change the theme so it's a bit more uh, relevant to Teams. Um, 
so you can pick from any of these themes you can add a, a, another picture uh, you want so you can customize the picture and the color but there's one that's sort of in the team's colors which uh, team's colors rather which is this one and it's sort of in keeping with some of the team's graphics that we try to add in down the bottom uh, makes it all nice and purple and makes all the uh, headings and stuff purple as well so now if we look at that that's blue instead of green the numbers are blue um, and sort of goes more in keeping with the team's theme but if you do want to change that then uh, you can do that with a plus button at the bottom and, and really customize it if you want to and then that's as uh, difficult as it is as you say we can go into different question types and go into branching and things if you really want to get into into different survey types but we're just keeping it simple net promote score i think is going to give you as, as, as much information as you need anyway um, so that's done now it's ready to go if you click on share it gives you some options so you can send out an email which obviously we probably don't want to do if we're looking at teams adoption we want to put stuff through teams uh, and keep people in teams rather than going out into internal email um, you can do a qr code if you're pretty snazzy or you can embed it somewhere so maybe in sway it's suggesting if you don't use sway then have a look at that in the office 365 menu as well but um we're preferring sharepoint news posts right now so we're gonna go and copy this link and uh, go and post it into the team so this is the easiest way to then share people to fill in your survey so we'll start a new post in the team uh, Write a little message uh, saying hi at the channel. Um, can you all fill in this survey, please? Um, so remember, you can just go and, type and paste that in, um, that link, and it'll do a nice little preview for you. Uh, if you've watched any of our other videos on linking files, uh, I always like to tidy up my links so you can either highlight a bit of text and click hyperlink and paste the link in there instead so it turns the link into a, uh, a text link if you do that after that you've got the preview it'll get rid of the preview so it might be worth doing that uh, again and you get the preview back and just click send and that's then Everyone's got the link in your team, and if they click on it, they're gonna to go to the filling in version of the form rather than the editing version. Again, the pictures are taking a bit of a long time to load, but ignore that for now. And you can see that we think, yeah, Teams is amazing. Um, let's give it 10, submit. Response was submitted. By default, um, you can the form is set so you can um, enter the, and fill in that feedback. Uh, as many times as you want if you don't want that you can turn that off in settings but for this purpose I think it's worth leaving on um, so that we can get a trend about how people are filling it in over time and if their opinions change on teams similarly the default for forms is that it records your uh, name and email when you fill in the form if you're the person filling it in so it does tell you that when you're filling it in so people uh, know that if they write something like I think my boss is rubbish, uh, that might be uh, attributable back to them. Again, you can turn that off in the form uh, settings, which if we just jump back into here and uh, click these three dots and settings, that's what I'm talking about. You can, uh, you can change those. So record name, you can turn off and you can make it one person, one response per person. Um, probably just want people in your organization. You don't really want random people outside. Um, you might need extra licenses to do external forms. You can do a start and end date for your form so it stops getting responses after a certain date. Uh, and you can have a custom thank you message, which uh, I like to do on my one just to make uh, it a bit of an Easter egg, uh, a bit funny, uh, quirky thank you message um, to spread the word. Look, if uh, you fill this in, then uh, you might get something to have a bit of a giggle at afterwards. And you can send an email receipt 
um, if you want. Um, what's probably good is get an email notification each time someone fills that in, as long as there's not going to be loads of people filling in. That just emails you as the creator of the form to say someone's uh, filled it in. So we've um, just submitted two, two of these. Let's do three. Submit another response and we'll give it a five. Not sure. Um, so then if we come back into forms and you can now see we've got three responses in the version of forms where we were the creator. And you can see that you get the number of responses, how much time it took to complete, um, what status the form's in. Uh, for net promote score, you get a nice little uh, chart. And if you don't know what net promote score is, uh, it's probably worth having a quick Google. But basically, if it's quite a harsh measure of scoring something. So if you're a 9 or a 10, you're a promoter in that you would tell other people about this product or service. If you're uh, seven and eight, you're, you're described as passive. And if you're six or, or below, you're a detractor. And uh, I guess you might wanna look some other change management to manage those people up to being at least passive, if not promoters. And that's how it works out the score. Again, you can go through the maths uh, if you do a quick Google search. If we'd put any responses in, uh, as in the comments, they, the latest ones would pop up at the bottom here. In fact, let's just go and do one so I can show you. Um, so let's do, yeah, nine teams is amazing, obviously. So now if we go back into here and uh, see it's refreshed for us. So we've increased the NPS score to plus 25, uh, which is a good start. We've got one response for that question is what that's saying. And we can see a quick preview of that there. Um, you can step through the results one by one, and um, if you haven't turned off the uh, picking the name uh, or keeping the name of the person that's doing the form, then you can see each time they fill it in, it'll add a number, another number each time they enter the form. Obviously, if it was real life, that would be a list of people's names. And you can step through all of those, see how long it took to complete, what the score was, and the full comments in full. So as long as you're not going to do anything uh, nefarious with people's feedback, as in their names, then I think it's a good idea to leave that on. Um, obviously, if you're sharing in the results, it's a good idea not to include the name for privacy reasons. And if you do start shaming people for filling in the, your feedback, then uh, they're less likely to fill it in in the future. Um, but the reason I want to show you the, that why it's a good idea to keep the name is you can export that form to Excel and that'll export all of the scores, uh, the email address, the name of who filled it in, and the start and end time of when they were filling it in, um, and all their comments. So if you kept that form open all the way through your team's journey and got people to fill it in whenever they thought of something, or if they thought something was good or bad, or how just how they were feeling that particular day, you can then just go and plot uh, either the scores or work out the NPS in Excel uh, and make a little chart say of you know how likely people are to uh, recommend teams to their colleagues um, over time. Uh, so a really useful feature in the Excel export um, there which is why you might want to keep the names on. So yeah again keeping the names in obviously you wouldn't want to share any of the specific answers but you could then do a lookup to probably some HR data that's, that groups people, um, probably over uh, five people in each group, but you could have it like by function or sub-channel or something like that to say, well, if you want to share some uh, information to managers, say well, your team is the team that has the most detractors, say um, they're not moving up over time, you probably need to step up and lead a bit more in the team's journey. Okay, so uh, we just looked at one way of sharing the form. Let's go and look at the other two. So uh, one way is that you can come into Teams and pin the form as a tab and direct people to that tab if you wanted to. So um, if you come into Teams, click the plus button to add a new tab, click Forms. And uh, you can see you can, you can create a form from the tabs in Teams. But for this purpose specifically, probably not a good idea to do that because that's creating a shared form 
that the team owns and therefore anyone in the team can uh, edit the form and see all the results and therefore everyone's name and results. So for this example, it's probably best to keep it as a personal form and then just post into the team that you want it filling in. Uh, in this example, the team is the people that you want the feedback from to see how they're going on with Teams. Quite long-winded, hopefully that makes sense. Uh, the reason you might want to create a shared form from the team is say you've got a project team uh, that's looking after Teams adoption, say, and you want it to create a form that everybody in that small team can see and edit and see the results. That might be something you want to do, and then take that link and share it somewhere else into another team or another part of the organization or somewhere else and then all the results from that area come back into that smaller team and then a small number of people can see the results and see what's going on and edit the form. Um, in our example, we're just one man band just trying to get some feedback and uh, we just want to post it into the team uh, to see how people are getting on. So we're going to add an existing form, pick the one uh, that we want so it's got all of the forms that i've created here and you can say whether you want to collect responses or share results so um, we want a tab to collect responses you can post to the channel about that tab and click save and it's going to just put that form right into a tab for us uh, it looks really nice and uh, all formatted as you would expect because uh, we clicked the post into the team obviously that that the fact that we've added that tab is now posted in. And like we say in all the basic training, if you don't mention anybody, then assume no one's gonna see it. So you might just wanna to reply to that and uh, at mention the channel or the team and say, please fill this in. So you see two slightly different ways of doing the same thing. This way, if they click this link, it's gonna jump them out into their browser. This way, when they click the link, it's gonna keep them in Teams, which might be uh, beneficial whilst you're trying to drive adoption. And then the third way you might wanna share it is doing a SharePoint news post. So if you've not seen that video, again, I'll link that in the description below, but basically we wanna jump out into the uh, SharePoint view of the team, which we can do all the time, but from going to files, then open in SharePoint. It's the easiest way to probably get there. It's going to jump us to the document folders because it thinks we're looking at uh, files and folders, which we were. We want to come back out to the home page. And by default, your home page might look something like this with some news at the top and some quick links. We're going to add a news post. Again, I'm rushing through this because we've already done this in another video. Uh, we're just going to create a blank form. And we're going to call this Teams uh, Feedback. Again, you can add any um, text or pictures or other files or videos or whatever you want in the SharePoint news post. Uh, we're not gonna go through all that in this video. I just wanna show you that you can add a web part that is a uh, form. And we just need the, the web address, which we've already got on our clipboard, I think. And we wanna collect responses and then we're embedding that form right into the news post for us. So we're going to post that news. And so it's going to appear on our homepage if we've told people to go to the homepage. We didn't put a picture on, so it's just got a white background, which doesn't look particularly uh, engaging or amazing. But I just want to show you that if you set up your SharePoint news connector. So the news connector seems to be getting quite slow today. It might be the internet, but um, usually that will pop up in your team. Um, as a news post um, and then people can click on the news post and then again see it. Also the news post goes on mobile and if you're publishing lots of news then people might be used to seeing it there as well. Also if you're publishing any, any documentation about Teams or anything through SharePoint then uh, you can just include the survey at the bottom of every one of your news posts so that you sort of keep prodding people to fill in that survey. If they're reading something about Teams they think oh I've got an idea the survey's right there and you can embed it into the uh, news post right there. So lastly, we're just gonna have a look at how Teams shows up on mobile through all the different ways. So here we are on our mobile and we've got the two posts that we looked at. So 
the survey link we can click and it just goes to uh, jumps us out into Safari to fill in the form and it's going to look pretty similar. So it jumps, out, jumps us out into Safari and uh, it looks pretty similar. Uh, we can see the form right there. We can fill it in by tapping and uh, filling stuff in on our mobile. And if we jump back into Teams, we can try the other way, which is clicking the tab. And the tab just takes us again, leaves us in Teams app, but um, we can just go and submit the thing there. And when we click back, it's going to go back into the team for us. Can also get to it from here. Uh, if we go back to down to the tab, it's going to show us the same thing. And then lastly, if we jump out into the SharePoint app, you can see the news post. that we did just now. And that's gonna have the form embedded right into the news post there for us to fill in. You can see on my small screen, it's an iPhone SE. I think it's the smallest screen you can still uh, still get uh, on a mobile. Uh, it's slightly cropped on the SharePoint news in the SharePoint app, um, but it can still function and, uh, and fill it in. So hopefully that was useful. Remember to like the video if you liked it. Subscribe and hit the bell icon if you haven't already to get notified every time I release a new video. I've got new videos on Teams coming out every Tuesday. Remember to click the download button in the description below to get the deck that goes along with our basic training videos. And they're linked in the description below as well. It's got all the basic tips written down in place for you. Also might be useful if you need to train other people on Teams. If you're interested in working with me, then email support at metimeapps.com. There's a link in the description below for that as well. And then finally, if you're having trouble having good meetings in your organization, you might want to check out our Meeting Timer app it's in the iOS App Store. Search for MeTime or visit www.metimeapps.com if you want any more information. Thanks for watching so far and we'll see you in the next video.